Welcome to this edition of the BRS and Inside. I'm sitting down with women's head soccer coach Lincoln Robley. Coach, thank you for joining us. Good to be here, to Coach. 7 0 1 on the year, a 4 0 win over number 18 ranked Columbia on Sunday. Take us through that game. You know, um, we started off uh, doing a good job of controlling the, controlling the game, possessing the ball well, and um, uh, just doing well in waiting restarts. And uh, we got good play from a lot of people from the front to the back. Um, really good attacking play from uh, Nicole Kelly. Um, Anna Romano, Emily Ambuel, uh, Olivia Myers, Natalie Duke, um, and just solid defense. Molly Schmidt, Kira Losey, um, Logan Hecock, Maisie Lurie did really well. And um, Michaela Dryling, Abby Hare, um, she got a couple assists in the game. And so we had a lot of people really involved in the in the game offensively and defensively. And our goalkeepers, um, Ashley Rehagen and Olivia Berry got another shutout. So really, really good game. A lot of people played well. And um, I... I thought that, you know, if we play well, we can score two goals in the first half, two goals in the second half, limit their opportunities, and come out with a 4-0 victory, and it's exactly what happened. So conference start last night. Right. 6-0 win over Evangel, a great way to start the conference season. Yep. Uh, we want to, you know, be strong in all of our games. Obviously, the conference games um, have an extra meaning to it. Um, Evangel's a good team. Um, we started off pretty sharp there. Nicole got uh, a couple goals. Um, we controlled the game pretty well, and then the second half um, got a number of goals. Emily Ambuel, really nice goal. Um, uh, Olivia Myers had a nice free kick, and um, we had um, let's see here. I'm trying to now count all the goals up. Trying to third. No, Nicole got another one in the second half. Um, that was really uh, uh, a good one. In our sixth goal, I should know this off. Emma I'm Strucker, Emma Strucker from a corner kick. So um, Emma scored her first um, um, college goal. So. Um, they're all good goals and good play to make it happen and got another shutout, so really proud of the ladies. Um, Nicole Kelly, Offensive Player of the Week again, second time she's won, and then she just goes out and puts a hat trick yeah. on the board last night. Just talk about her play at the start of the season. You know, she's doing great. Um, she, she's, uh, uh, she scored a really big goal last year in the national quarterfinal for us, and in the spring she did really great, and she's been uh, doing a great job, all facets of the game, offense, defense, connecting, taking people on, hitting shots. Um, she's going on headers, she's hitting right foot, left footed, and she's got great movement off the ball and really, um, she's got a lot of assists as well. So she's really, um, got a complete game going and she's had, um, some fantastic moments out there again, offensively and defensively and just having a super season. We don't talk about this enough, how great your defense is. Two goals yeah. given up in eight games. Just talk yeah. about the back line and how great they've been so far. We, we've got, um, fantastic, uh, players back there, um. Molly Schmidt and Logan Heacock have done a great job from the from the back line and Maisie Lurie and Abby Hare. All of them are very good offensively and defensively. They work together. Um, they're fearless. Um, they have incredible work ethic, and uh, they're they're very brave. And that combined with our great goalkeeping play and great hustle from everyone on the field has really made it very difficult for our opposition to score goals on us. Um, we've given up uh, very few opportunities. Um, for anyone to score, but um, you know our goal is to try and put more balls in the net than the other team, and um, our defense has been doing a great job. Um, and uh, we're doing really well. You said two goals we've given up this year. Um, you know we don't want to give up any, but uh, we know that um, we the other teams that we play against are very good and have a lot of good offensive power, and we just have to be very focused on trying to stop them to continue these shutouts going. Ashley's in her first year as your keeper. How important is it to have to have? Molly and Logan right in front of her to help her out. Right. Now, Ashley's a sophomore, uh, but she's his first year. Yeah. And she's been in that starting. And, um, well, it's very, I mean, she's very good. I mean, um, uh, the organization, confidence, and talent, um, Ashley does a fantastic job. And having people in front of her that are a senior and junior just give her that added experience. Yeah. Um, we've got our, our starting back four. Um, we've got uh, junior, senior, junior, senior. And then um, we've got great depth uh, with veterans coming off the bench as well. So uh, we've got a lot of experienced people who have been there, done that, played a lot of big games, and really come through in big moments. And um, Ashley's doing great. And Molly and Logan, um, Kara Losey, Michaela Dryling, um, Emma Strecker, a whole bunch of people are doing a super job on defense. And Isabel Wilhelm and Ellen Bedell have been playing a lot of minutes and holding them in, just done a fantastic job. So. A lot of people have really worked hard to, uh, to get these shutouts and a lot of good experience to help that happen. We talked about conference opened up last night. What's your outlook on the rest of the conference so far through the season? 
I've been telling people this, our conference just keeps getting better all the time. Um, we've got um, a challenge every single weekend, every single you know midweek game. Um, I think our conference, uh, when this conference season started, and everyone had about seven out-of-conference games. I think we had only two teams that didn't have winning records. And so that just tells you outside of our conference, they just beat up on everybody. So um, we've got a lot of teams with a lot of success, with a lot of confidence. Whatever they've been doing in their pre-conference has been working. And so we know that when we go up against an opponent, there's someone with a lot of ambition, a lot of reasons to be positive, and what they've been doing um, has made them successful. So we have to be on, we have to be sharp, we have to be prepared, and we know that if it's a hard game, it's going to be a good one. On Saturday, Baker comes in on family weekend. Always an important game considering yeah. the rivalry. Yeah. What are your expectations for Saturday? Oh, I mean, it's always always a great game. I mean, Baker um, isn't too far away from us, so. Um, a lot of players competed against each other in club ball or high school, maybe even been teammates. Um, so there's some families that even know each other. And because obviously the proximity, there's a lot of fans that are there. And, and so it should be a great game. Baker's always had a lot of success. And um, I think it'll be a, a quality game that uh, the players will draw, enjoy, the coaches will enjoy, and the, the fans and parents weekend will have a great time. And we talked last night in your post game honoring a couple teams on Saturday. Go ahead and talk about that. Sure. Uh, we're gonna. It's been 20 years since 1998, the first uh, women's soccer team to win a Heart of America Conference um, championship. Um, they were uh, league champs, and uh, we're going to be recognizing them at halftime, as well as um, a team from 10 years ago, the 2008 team, um, that were the com first conference tournament champions and first to be in the national tournament. And so... Uh, that was, uh, you know, 10 and 20 years ago, both championship teams. Um, we have a great um, following with our alums. We get tremendous support from our alums, and we always try and keep track of all the great history and, and recognize them. So it'll be great seeing a lot of faces come back on campus. They get to see each other. We all get to kind of catch up. They get to see the campus of some of them haven't been here. Some of them are regulars are here, yeah. and some of them um, haven't, and they're traveling far distances. But we're going to have a little reception in the afternoon beforehand, and we'll have the game, and it would just be a great time to see everyone and celebrate a lot of bandits and women's soccer. All right, Coach, thank you very much. Best of luck thank on you, Saturday. Dakota. Thank you, Dakota. Thank you. Ladies and college women's soccer coach Lincoln Robley on the BRS and Insider. A wise man once said, the world offers you comfort, but you were not made for comfort. You were made for greatness. Discover what you were made for. Benedictine College, where greatness begins. Back on the BRS and Insider, I'm sitting down with volleyball coach Aaron Cooper. Coach, thank you for joining us. Thank you. And they're sitting at 7-8 and eight coming off of a loss to M&U on Wednesday. Just take us through that match. Yes. Well, we knew going into M&U, um, their record is deceiving. They're the best three and whatever team in the nation, I think. Um, played, they've played a lot of top ranked teams. Um, you know, we did what we could to prepare for them, um, but I really believe MNU played out of their minds and we didn't have an answer for what they were giving us. Two tough games on the road at CMU and at Valley. You dropped those two, you dropped them and you lost three straight. Talk about yes. that experience for the girls. Yes, we are learning from this. Um, I truly believe that every loss that we have, we have a learning experience and we're getting better. Um, again, it's not about the wins right now, it's about being the strongest team at the end of the season. And so as long as we're continuing to learn and take stride um, and learn how to deal with some adversity and, you know, we're right there in all of those matches um, and getting over the hump with adversity, I think, and learning how to control that at that point in time. Floor got attacker of the week last week. She's been very consistent as consistent can be. Talk about her and just what she means to the team. Yeah, she is. She does a lot for our team, um, not only offensively, uh, but we've now put her into a six uh, rotation position where she's playing all six rotations. And she's, again, a great defender. We, we love having her in serve receive. She's one of our top um, serve receivers. Um, that helps us out. Uh, she is a rock for us. And um, not to take put a lot of pressure on her, but she's able to handle it uh, majority of the time. And... Now we're just trying to do what we can to help relieve some of that pressure uh, with some other players. MNU on Wednesday was the start of a six-game home stretch for you guys. How important is this stretch? And it can, seems like it could really help you guys get back on track. Yes, absolutely. We're looking forward to being home and sleeping in our own beds and being able to study when 
I'm not on a bus or in a hotel room. Uh, so that in itself is a good thing for us. Uh, I, I, our home crowds are amazing. We had a great home crowd against MNU and um, our, we plan for that again this weekend with it being family weekend. Uh, the majority of the time we have great crowds then. And so looking forward to that and just being able to sleep in our own beds and prepare and, you know, do our um, same routine. How great is that for the girls to have the crowd they've had behind them when yeah. they played at home? Yes, it's been awesome. And I we feed so much off of our crowd. Our crowd is getting smarter and smarter about the game of volleyball, which helps us out. Um, not only giving us some adrenaline and some hype, but also it helps us out with, you know, uh, a lot of other aspects of the game as well. Um, however, I, I think that we're learning with that. We sometimes, I, I believe coming out on MNU, um, that first set, we just had a ton of adrenaline and when we needed it the most, we, you know, we were coming down off of our adrenaline high. So you get to see the North division for the first time. You get yes. Bruce State on Friday. Mm -hmm. What are your expectations for Friday? Yeah. Um, both Friday and Saturday, they're both, uh, North division games, just as important as any of our South division, um, we're just going to come one game at a time and see what we can do. We're working harder on ob obtaining goals. Uh, we have five goals that we set for every match, and uh, we're going to work on obtaining those versus the W, and I'm, I'm a firm believer that as soon as we obtain those goals, the, the W will come easily. Conference outlook, conference five games in roughly for you guys and the rest of the conference. What is your outlook on the rest of the conference right now? Yeah, and I, and I said this a couple weeks ago when we talked. You know, our conference is much better um, top to bottom, and it, there is no game that is easy for us. And, and, and finding that consistency, especially in the South right now where we're all beating one another up and um, just trying to find it. I, for us uh, to continue to grow in our conference, we need to find that consistency and start uh, beating teams uh, consistently. So. All right, Coach, thank you very thank much. You. Best of luck to you this weekend. Benjamin Volleyball Coach Aaron Cooper on the BRSN Insider. A wise man once said, the world offers you comfort, but you were not made for comfort. You were made for greatness. <laughs> Discover what you were made for. Benedictine College where greatness begins. Back on the BRS Innings, I'm now sitting down with interim men's head soccer coach, John Sosa. Coach, thank you for joining us. It was my pleasure. Thank you. 1-1 one, one draw against number 16, Columbia, on Sunday. Just take us through that match. Well, I think they were a very strong team, very physical, very athletic. Uh, we were able to out-possess them a little bit for most of the game, and we were able to create good chances to win the game. So we kind of left with a little bit of a bad taste with the, with the result because we felt that uh, we were the better team that night, and we, were, we could have won it. So that team went. That team beat the national championship a couple weeks before you guys played. What did that tell you about your team and how you compared to to them? Well, I think we we're a very competitive team. I think the the one thing that we have is that we have a bunch of guys who are gonna give you a hundred percent day in day out. So it's gonna be we're gonna be a very very difficult team to play against because not only we are very energetic, but we're very athletic and we play with a lot of heart. 5 to win over Evangel last night. John Mullen had two goals. Take us through last night. Uh, I think last night was, uh, was a good game for us. We were able to um, to obviously, you know, score five goals, which is always very, very important. Uh, he also allowed us to be able to, you know, possess the ball a little more, be a little bit more patient, try a couple of different things that, you know, we didn't have a chance to do against Colombia. Um, and then we were also able to play a lot of guys, you know, so I was able to play uh, almost everyone yesterday. So that was a, that was good. That was good to see. Those last last three game, last three or four games you guys have had, you guys had the opportunity to get a lot of bodies in the game. How important is that experience for later on in the year? Well, I think it's always important because you never know when when those guys are going to be required to come in in a big game. Uh, along with that, obviously, when you play three three games in six seven days, yeah. uh, it's always important to try to keep the guys as fresh as possible. Um, so so no, I'm excited and I'm happy that I was able to do that. Yeah, even more important, you guys are hampered by some injuries right now. How is that depth helping you guys right now? Uh, it's 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 been a it's been a very challenging season in that area because obviously losing so many guys through injuries uh, always puts you in a in a difficult situation. But I think the guys who are receiving the opportunity they're stepping up to the plate 
uh, with a lot of confidence. They're obviously receiving the full confidence from the coaching staff. Yes. Um, so I think they're, they're reacting really well to the opportunity. Four ranked teams in five games. This could be a very, very important stretch for your team to really get going. Yeah, I think that's, that's what our conference is about, right? I think uh, the, every single year you never know who's going to be the, the team who kind of looks apart from everyone. Uh, after the first, you know, the first week of, of games, you still don't know who's the team, yeah. who the team to worry about. So I think obviously the whole rank and the whole stuff, uh, it's always good. It's always it's always a motivation for us because obviously they're ranked higher than we are. Uh, but at the end of the day, we just gonna approach every single game with the same mentality, knowing that we're capable of winning every single match. Number two, Baker comes around Saturday, family weekend, rivalry game, just a all around big game for you guys. What are your expectations for Saturday? Oh, it's gonna be a fun, difficult game. Uh, difficult because they're they're a very strong, athletic team uh, who take a lot of pride on, on the physical aspect of the game. And I think that has been the challenge for us the last few years, uh, being able to contain them in, in, in some areas with those set pieces and things like that. But I think it's going to be a good match for, for people to come out, watch, enjoy it, and hopefully we can come out with a result. We've already talked about four ranked teams in five games, and you're out on the rest of the conference now, just saying that there's four teams that are ranked in the conference. Yeah, I think it's it's phenomenal. I think it speaks, it speaks very highly of our conference and the programs that we're running. Um, obviously, I would love to be one of those top-ranked teams. Right now, we're not in it, but I think we, we – we're one or two games away from being able to be there. So I'm excited for the opportunity. I know the boys are ecstatic to be able to play against teams of that caliber, and I think we're ready. Going forward, what were some things you would like to see from your team? I think I would like to see us be a little bit more mature and be able to um, to finish up games a little better, uh, especially because the last few games we dropped, we, we dropped goals that we shouldn't have uh, yeah. because we got a little complacent, because we felt like we had the game in our hands. And I think that's always the challenge, right, to be able to play uh, games for a full 90 minutes at a high level, staying composed, staying uh, mentally ready without having to break down. So I think that's the challenge for us right now uh, as we get ready to play, you know, the, the biggest rivals of our conference. All right. Thank you very much, I Coach. appreciate it. Thank you. Interim men's head soccer coach John Sosa on the BRSN Insider.